Hi, it's a great privilege for me to be here at the AHA 23 in Philadelphia with Dr. Christian Ruff. I'm Ben Bichteli, a cardiologist from Section of Vascular Medicine at the Brigham Harvard Medical School and Yale Center for Outcomes Research and Evaluation. Full disclosure, I'm also a advisory board member of NATF here with Dr. Christian Ruff, who is a director of clinical cardiology at the Brigham, associate professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School, senior investigator at Timmy Study Group, and last but not least, he is also president of NATF. Dr. Ruff, thank you so much for your time. Love to hear more about the Zalia and what the ta takeaways for clinicians are and what the future looks like. Terrific. Well, I'm thrilled to share the results of the Azalea Timmy 71 trial today. It's really important. We know that anticoagulation to prevent stroke is really the cornerstone of our treatment in atrial fibrillation. And although we've had DOACs for over a decade, and they're very effective with very low rates of life-threatening bleeding, unfortunately, clinically important bleeding still occurs. And we know that bleeding or the fear of bleeding leads to significant undertreatment of patients. Somewhere between 30 to 50% of patients with atrial fibrillation who meet a class one guideline indication for anticoagulation are not prescribed an anticoagulant, won't take it, or take it and stop and stop it after several months because of bleeding. And so we clearly need an even safer anticoagulant. And in the Azalea Timmy 71 trial, we studied a novel way to provide hemostasis sparing anticoagulation, a factor 11 inhibitor, uh, abilasimab. And abilasimab, a monoclonal antibody given once monthly compared to a standard care DOAC rivaroxaban, resulted in substantially highly significant reductions in bleeding with a 67% reduction in major clinically relevant non-major bleeding with 150 milligram dose and a 77% reduction with the 90 milligram dose. And if you look at major bleeding alone, which is essentially bleeding that leads to hospitalization, we have a 74% reduction with 150 milligram dose and an 81% reduction with the 90 milligram dose. And gastrointestinal bleeding, which has really been the bane of our existence with standard of care DOAX, was almost eliminated a 93% reduction with both doses. And so we're really thrilled because this, this trial really fulfills the promise of factor 11 inhibition, that we may finally be able to provide effective hemostasis in an incredibly safe way, and really sets the stage for the ongoing phase three trials of abilasimab and other factor 11 inhibitors to demonstrate their efficacy. And if they're as effective as we hope they are, and they're so safe, this would be a remarkable advance for our patients and providers. My first reaction is just, wow, these are not minuscule uh, re relative risk differences that we are getting with like 30,000 patients. They're like clinically relevant, very large differences. Thank you so much, Dr. Ruff. The question that I have, it's hard to predict the future, yes. but given these large treatment effects for reducing bleeding, do you think in future we are gonna see more trials of 11 and 11A inhibitors across the spectrum of thrombotic disorders? I do, it's a great question. We know abilasimab in particular is actually, also has not only the phase three trial that we're conducting in high risk atrial fibrillation who have been deemed ineligible for anticoagulation. It's actually being studied in two cancer associated VTE studies. And that's incredibly important because not only are those patients at high risk of recurrent VTE, but they're at high rates of bleeding. So they need a safer anticoagulant. And so we have VTE, we have atrial fibrillation, and then, of course, what are the other areas that we know anticoagulation is effective? Non-cardioembolic stroke, and also in coronary disease, and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. But what's been the problem there? In those fields, we need antiplatelet drugs. And although adding an anticoagulant has shown to be effective in the past, bleeding is just prohibitive, so nobody does it. But if we had an even safer anticoagulant, could we add it on top of antiplatelet therapy in coronary disease, in secondary acute stroke prevention? And I think there are ongoing trials with factor 11 inhibitors in those space, and it really might be a remarkable advance. If we can prevent clots with an anticoagulant in an incredibly safe way, we might start using these anticoagulants in areas that we haven't been able to to date. So I think it's a really exciting future, and I think the fact that abilasimab was so safe really defines and cements the safety a factor 11 inhibition, I think really sets the stage for these exciting phase three trials, which are all ongoing. Thank you so much, Dr. Ruff. Such an exciting time to follow thrombosis investigations. And once again, many congratulations to you and the team. Thank you. And I really appreciate the opportunity to share this exciting news today at the AHA.